Rebecca and White Lady Eon, you are spot on. Impala is pa, which is mixed up. Chigamba is, of course, Shangan for Terrapin. So there she is. So as I said, patience will pay the game, will pay off for her here. As it gets warmer and the terrapins start basking and the monitor lizards start getting mobile, she's going to get more and more chances to hopefully catch and to keep herself sustained. Sorry, I'm just hand signaling uh, to uh, the vehicle, telling her they should come next to me because it's a better view. Well, it looks like she's got through the carapace and she's and uh, munching on the innards at the moment. Morning, morning. Very well, and yourself? Fine. Wonderful, thank you. No, you're perfect there, don't worry. And it is always wonderful to spend Monday morning looking at leopards rather than sitting in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts did you see? Twin dams. So I'm just chatting and finding out, uh, it's more than likely was, was the same female. She came through from Little Gauri last, at some point last night. Okay, so guys, um, so it sounds like they had a view of Shungile after we finished drive last night. On her way through. But she's, as I said, she's definitely looking a lot more healthy than she was. Pug a Sinatic is wondering, how successful are leopard hunts? Do they succeed every time? Unfortunately for leopards, not, but fortunately for the rest of the animals. Um, your leopard, on average, in this part of Africa, has a success rate of around 125 to 15%. So only one and a half times out of 10 that they try to catch something, do they succeed? So that is, it's not very high. Of course, if they had a very high success rate, there would be no no impala and no terrapins left in the whole of Africa. And the predators are always going to have a little bit of a, a, a or have to be at a bit of a disadvantage. Um, and the reason you always find that there are more predator, uh, more, sorry, more prey species than predators, because if the predator numbers got too high, they, there would be nothing else. And they'd have to eat each other, which wouldn't be very pleasant, which they do do sometimes anyway. Morning, Michael. Michael's wondering, is she too young to start scent marking? I would say she is. Um, she's probably really only, only going to start scent marking and, and calling at about two, two to two and a half years of age. Now, it's going to be very interesting to watch her because she has been abandoned at such a young age that we might see some, some sort of more developed or advanced behavior a lot earlier because she, she's going to have to become... Um, well, she's going to have to, to, to grow up quickly, so to speak. Now, the one problem, as soon as you start scent marking and, and calling, is you, you do attract attention to yourself. It's a bit of a catch-22 for her. So if, she, if she's scent marking and calling, she is proclaiming a territory, but she's also announcing her, her presence. And uh, the older and more experienced female leopards might take advantage of that and push her out of this territory. But it is going to be absolutely fascinating to watch how this plays out. We, we think so, so it's Karula's cub, and we haven't seen Karula in over a month, and we haven't found any tracks or anything for a while, so we're not sure yet. We don't know now, but uh, the longer we it goes, the more likely it is that she's, yeah. yeah. So 
sorry about that. They're only just chatting to the vehicle next to us. And of course, we are desperately worried about our favorite queen, uh, Karula. And I'm hoping that we're all wrong and she makes a miraculous appearance uh, in, the, in, the, in the next couple of weeks. Hi, Ellen in Arkansas. Ellen is saying, is it possible that Krula could have moved away from the Cubs to try to force them to become independent before coming back for one last family breakup? Ellen, I think it's very, very unusual. So historically, uh, Krula, well, I can only speak for her last set of Cubs before this quarantine in Konuma. When she did want them to become independent, they were a lot older. They were, they were over two years old. Um, when she did make that final break and uh, what she did she, she spent a lot of time further to the north in Buffalsock and to the east in Torchwood and what she was trying to do there was basically get rid of rid of the cubs um, because they were eating most of her kills and and uh, they were just being a general pain now the, the big difference Ellen um, between this time and that time is that Rexon, Taxon, Aubrey uh, and the Buffalsock vehicles are, are, have been driving those areas extensively and also driving Torchwood extensively and no one has found a track uh, even when we didn't see her for a long time other people were seeing her either to the south or to the north or to the east of us but the fact that she hasn't been seen we haven't seen a track um, and especially on on her boundaries and Tandy has definitely started taking liberties on that eastern boundary and and coming into what is traditionally Karula's territory this morning Tandy was found pretty much deep inside Karula's territory um, to the south of us around the Mawati River. So Tandi's always sort of been around the Mawanini, never really coming that far far west to the Mawati. But this morning she was seen in the Mawati River. So it is a, it is it is it's possible that Tandi might be trying to siphon off uh, some of that territory for herself. What have you spotted, Shongalolo? Is there another terrapin about to be moved on to the next plane. But she's looking a lot 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 healthier than the last time I saw her. Uh, apparently the dam cam is looking uh, at some uh, Egyptian geese behind us I think. Yes, Egyptian geese. Now, they're a bit too wily for Shungile to get hold of. I have actually seen leopards catch and kill Egyptian geese before, but it's going to be in the, at night. It's, it's, they're generally, she's not going to have much luck during the daylight hours. Uh, those geese are very, very alert and aware and very noisy. And she is still munching. And the fact that we can't hear bone crunching means she's already broken open the carapace and she's eating the soft innards of that poor little, there we go, soft innards of that poor little terrapin. <laughs> 